Hey guys, Matt Allen, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bass, and today we're going to talk about shaky head fishing. We've had a bunch of requests for it. We shot some summer worming videos this year. Uh, we got into it a little bit, but we didn't do anything specific to the shaky head. And then towards the end of this video, we're going to throw you a curveball, show you some completely different rigging as well. Uh, Tim, why don't you why don't you take it from there? Fire us off. Shaky heads are a great way to catch a lot of fish. I primarily uh, finesse fish my shaky heads. I throw them anywhere from six pound tests up to 10 or 12. And I typically, unless I'm fishing like Clear Lake or I'm fishing for big largemouth, usually I'm fishing for uh, spots and smallies, I will throw them on a spinning rod and uh, a lot of great worms, a lot of great heads. We'll get into that in a little bit. Why don't you talk a little bit about the specific rod that you like to throw it on? So like I said earlier, I typically throw my shaky heads and stuff on finesse gear. Unless I'm throwing bigger worms, you know, some bigger Yamamoto cuttail worms or something like that. But I typically throw, um, I have two rods that I actually really like. One is a G Loomis. I actually throw the GLX BSR852. It's actually their Sanko rod, but it's a great shaky head rod. Mm -hmm. And my other favorite rod is a Dobbins Champion Extreme HP 743. It's a seven foot four rod, a little bit longer and it's a three power. So you can actually get away with a little bit heavier head for fishing deeper water and get, get good hook penetration. Yeah. Now for me, I do use casting gear. Uh, just personal preference. I like to throw the shaky head on a casting rod. I also use an 852, right? The exact same model. Yeah, the 852C JWR. Uh, I throw it in the NRX, personal preference. Uh, <laughs> We'll give you links to all these different products in the video description down below. So drop down that video description. We'll have links to all this. We'll get you some price point options too because it's all about action. Uh, the more money you spend, the more sensitive that rod is going to get. You'll, you'll feel more bites. You know, you get those fish that you didn't, they didn't crush it. They just sort of picked it up. Maybe you'll catch some more fish that way, but you got to work within your budget and it's about action. So we'll give you some different price point rods in the right actions. Uh, because it is really important that you get that action right. Because a lot of times on shaky heads, you know, sometimes they're crushing them, but sometimes it's a pressure bite. Just wait. Feels it's like just wait. It's like you come up against a rock. You lift up, and it just feels like you have like a wet rag on your line. Just yep. heavy. And if you if you choose a rod with the right action, you can see. see the tip. You can just barely see it a lot sooner. So so rod action is key. Uh, Specific heads. The head that I throw the most, the Dirty Jigs head, it's a Scott Canterbury head. Uh, it's got like an arky or a pitchin style head to it, rounded head, so it comes through cover fairly well. Uh, and it comes through all kinds of cover. That's what I like. like. It'll come through wood, it'll come through rock, it comes through grass. You know, it's not perfect for coming through grass, but it comes through. And then you can turn around and throw it straight into rock and come through that too. So I like that versatility that I get with that head. Uh, and then of course, I think both of us, everything that we throw for shaky heads, we prefer screw locks. Yep, every single one of them. Uh, it's just the best way that we found to get those worms to hold up and last. Yeah, so the two heads, and I actually, I throw a lot of that head as well. Um, but the other two that I throw primarily, gonna be the Dirty Jigs Finesse Stand Up. Mm -hmm. That's a great head, it's got more of a it's got more of a, a point to it on the head, and for whatever reason, I don't know why or how it works, but it, it just comes through cover very well. It doesn't it does. get doesn't get hung up as often as some of the different style heads. I really like that hook. Comes in great sizes. You can throw some bigger worms on it if you do want to step up to the casting gear. The other one I throw, it's got a lighter wire hook. It's the Owner Ultra Head Shaky Head. Again, they both have the the twist lock in there. So what that is, you screw your the head of your bait on there, and then you Texas rig and, and you know Texas pose it. You kind of skin hook it back, and it's weedless. So if you're fishing deep rock piles, or you're fishing grass lines, or stumps, timber, th those sort of things, the the wacky or the the Texas rig weedless is the way to go. He's gonna show you right here. Yeah, you keep right on going. I just figured I'd put one on. You screw that onto that worm, and then all you do is you you kind of line it up, poke through. And in the beginning, I get it where it's just, 
There's just barely a point there. And then as that worm starts wearing out as you're catching fish, then I just poke it all the way through and text post more like it's a, a normal rig, a normal Texas rig. So that's all there is to it. And they stay on there so well. That's why we use those. And there's a lot of different ways to fish these. You know, in the wintertime when they're, you're fishing the cold water months, the cold weather, uh, you can drag and that, that thing's just down there digging in. That tail's just kind of, with, with all three of these heads, they're, they're made to keep that bait standing up off the water so that, that tail, the bait's up there working. Um, in, the, in the warmer months, you know, in that summer video, we'll put a link down to the, the video description. You know, we were actually hopping them pretty quickly and getting that, mm -hmm. getting that reaction bite. But, but a shaky head's a great way to catch, uh, catch great, great fish, quantities of fish, and uh, not lose a lot of tackle. You know, and you just, you just hit on something, nail on the head, that I was going to completely miss. And that is, you know, it's called the shaky head. So what do people do with it? You shake that thing. And in the summertime, we work them hard, just like he said, pop them up, let them fall, or just shake them really hard. But in the wintertime, you don't want to work it that hard. Nothing in cold water has a ton of movement. Nothing that's really in the water. Uh, everything is slow moving. So if you're really shaking that thing or working it hard, it doesn't look right. In the wintertime, it's almost a dead stick. You just pull that worm and it's still standing up on bottom. When you pull it, it's got that nice tail movement. They look good. You want to fish them differently in the winter than you do in the warmer months. Yeah, and pay attention to that too because, you know, a lot of times you're fishing, you're just fishing on, on uh, muscle memory or, you know, a, a habit. And one thing I have to do when I'm fishing cold water, I actually have to think about putting that rod tip in the water. That way I know that I'm not shaking it, that I'm actually keeping that bait as still as possible, letting the, the structure down the bottom give that bait action and not <laughs> shaking, shaking it too much. Yeah. Now, baits, uh, the worms that we throw, if I had to guess, probably the number one shaky head worm anywhere in the country is a Zoom trick worm. Uh, and that is a phenomenal bait. But I'm going to throw you a, another option. That's the net bait, the T-Mac. These two worms are virtually identical. The difference is, and the difference it's, that for me it's convenience, when I get a trick worm, you take that thing out of the package, if you want to put it onto a screw lock, you have to pinch like a quarter inch off the end of it to get to where the worm is thick enough to screw onto a screw lock and then it stays great. But the T-Mac, it's virtually identical in every way except that the head is thick. So you can, well, like you saw, you can take one right out of the package and screw it right on. So if you haven't played with that bait, action-wise, identical to a trick worm, profile, identical to a trick worm, but it's more convenient putting them on and off, catching fish, spending less time rigging, more time fishing. So that's one that you need to try throwing. Yeah, I grabbed a handful real quick. I got the actual, the Magnum trick worm. So mm -hmm. if you're fishing on a bait caster, you're fishing heavier gear, heavier head, fishing for bigger fish, the Magnum trick worm is a great way to go. Um, otherwise, my two favorite ones are gonna be the Robo worm or the uh, Yamamoto, the, the cut tail. Got a little bit different action, comes in different sizes, and that's a great, great bait. Yeah, and you know, one thing that, that is preached over and over again with shaky head fishing is that you want worms that float. And there is a lot of truth in that. But I'm surprised because these heads stand up so well, I think people miss a lot of opportunities with baits that actually have some weight to them that they still stand up and they still fish great on their own. So don't trap yourself in a little box thinking you have to be throwing floating worms. Play with some of your different options. Uh, now let's throw a curveball. You want to grab that other stuff? The next time you are on a shaky head bite and it gets a little bit tough, especially in summer, that's where we, at least for me, I see a lot of other people doing the same thing I'm doing. Uh, the fish start feeling a lot of pressure. We start throwing a different rig. And what that is, is a weighted wacky but we throw them with those swing heads. Uh, we throw them in big sizes, we throw them in small sizes. This is a Dirty Jigs pivot point. It's a football head, half ounce to a three-aught hook. This bait, I don't know if you've ever seen this bait, that's called a Hag's Tornado, and this is the big one, but basically it's just a giant ringworm. But that's a floating bait, a high float bait. When your fish starts seeing the shaky head over and over and over and over and over, they're always coming through the water the same way, right? They're always standing up, straight worm. When you come through and throw a different profile, 
but that bait is high floating in the water and it's completely free swinging. So as you work it and you stop, that bait's just up there just moving, it will get bites that other baits just do not get. It's a great follow-up bait. Now this one's giant. That's the biggest size that they make. Now I've not caught a double digit doing this, but I did stick. The biggest one I've stuck on this setup is a 9.8. It gets big bites. It is worth doing. And then there's also a small version. Yeah, the key, he talked about it. The key is the free, the free moving head. When this bait is sitting down there, you know, you got to throw a worm that floats. A lot of these worms, you know, pay attention to that. Make sure you get a, a worm that floats. Mm -hmm. When it's sitting down there and that head is just sitting there and that, that bait is just free floating, you don't have to give it any action at all. It's down there doing its thing and that is the key. This is actually the Freedom Tackle, the Zodiac. It's got a free swinging head. It's got a real light hook on here that you could actually interchange to, to whatever hook you want. Right. But uh, this is a great, great version of the finesse setup that Matt was just talking about. Yeah, it's just a... It's a completely different approach to the exact same group of fish. If you're on a shaky head bite, stay on that bite. But if you have a tough day, or if you've been running those fish and you're on day four and they don't want to eat it anymore, you pull that rig out where you're now throwing the same basic profile, but it's wacky rigged and it's floating there and it's got its own motion. Man, they can't turn that down. So try that this year. And again, you may have never seen those heads, We'll put links again to all that down in the video description so you can find it really easily. We hope that helps you guys. Is there anything you want to add to that? No, guys. Again, thanks for the support. It is winter time. If, you, if you're having a tough time getting fish to bite, switch things up a little bit. You can try this out. But again, guys, if you, if you guys like the video, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. Matt and I were trying to do three videos a week. Uh, but again, guys, thanks for the support. We appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, guys.